It's Alyssa with Alyssa Marie Baking. And thank you guys for watching this entire season. This is our last episode of the season. I cannot believe that. And I hope that we can do so many more seasons of this and just keep you guys entertained for as long as humanly possible. It's pretty close to Easter. Not crazy close, but close enough you're still planning. And my family every year at Easter watches a very specific big fat movie. And in that big fat movie, there is an entire scene about a bun cake. And bun cakes happen to be one of my favorite things to make and one of my specialties. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make my citrus bun cake. Boon cake. We're gonna have a boon cake. We're going to, we are actually from France. We are doing a boon cake today. Life is an illusion. Death is a gift. So bun cake. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a super easy recipe. It's gonna to come together really quickly. I think when people hear bundt cake, it's immediately intimidating. It doesn't need to be. Our ancestors made bundt cakes for every single occasion you could ever imagine. The first thing we're gonna do, because if you've seen the other episodes, I forget to tell you this constantly, please preheat your oven to 325. took until the last episode for me to remember. Preheat your oven to 325. So far, so good. Three cups of flour. To that, we are going to add one teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and a full teaspoon of kosher salt. We've talked about kosher salt a little bit. Always taste your salt, because if I say a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, that's going to be different from brand to brand. It's also going to be different from sea salt to Himalayan salt to iodized salt. So I have a little blurb in my blog just to kind of guide you guys when I say salt, exactly what I mean. A blurb in your blog. A blurb in my blog. It is a blurb in my blog. Is that French? I, so I took two years of French in high school and every year at New Year's resolutions, my resolution is to learn French. So far, I have learned several food phrases. I have learned how to ask if you speak English and um, most of the Edith Piaf lyrics and that's about it. But one day I will learn French and I will go to France. And then I will smoke cigarettes. And a big rich television company will pay for your trip. And a big rich telephone company, telephone company, <laughs> such as ATT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. You're done. Put these in the sink. So we've got our dry ingredients. Just taking a whisk, mixing it together. This is more for getting lumps out than it is for actually mixing it together. So just kind of do a real quick whisk around. And as we say at Alyssa Marie Bakes, set it aside. Just like your emotions, push them down. If you have emotions, our plan is to push them so far down you don't realize you have them. And then one day you're just gonna break down in the middle of filming your new YouTube show. Honey, if you have feelings, you're just not Southern enough. <laughs> now we are going to do our cream and butter. Nope. Now we are going to cream our butter. So we are gonna take our handy dandy mixer that has no name. We're gonna have our paddle attachment. We are going to take two sticks of butter, which is one cup, half pound. I'm just gonna pop that right in. Uh, I don't like my hands being gross. <laughs> we are then going to take two cups of just plain sugar. And when I say plain sugar, I mean granulated sugar you buy in your grocery store. Nothing fancy, just plain old sugar. Sugar. Lock that in. Make sure we get this paddle attachment on. Close it, lock it, stir it. Cream the butter and the sugar. Take a nap. It's still a little bit cool. So we are going to take our spatula, put the butter back down there, and then crank it up until it creams properly. You can also uh, do it in a microwave. There's a million different ways you can do it, but because mine is already so close to room temperature, I'm just gonna push it back down like my emotions. It's still pliable. It's still almost room temperature, so we're just gonna crank it up just a little bit. I'm gonna crank this up to medium. We're gonna take it back down. So what you're looking for is not overly light and fluffy, but for the sugar and the butter to be combined together. So we're gonna take four eggs and one tablespoon of vanilla. 
and we're going to incorporate that in. One of the things you're gonna notice is when you're adding the eggs, it's gonna look a little curdled. That can happen. I'm sure if you bake a lot, you've seen that. A really easy fix for it is just a little bit of your flour mixture that's gonna go into it in a little bit. Keep going and doing exactly what I'm doing, and I promise you, you're gonna have a Bundt cake. So we're gonna put this on stir, add our eggs roughly one at a time. If it happens to be two, it happens to be two. Once those are combined a little bit, add the rest. If you've seen the red velvet cake episode, you know that right now is the exact perfect time to prep your pan. I don't care if you are the bunt cake master. I don't care if you literally make bunt cakes for a living. There's always gonna be one that doesn't come out right, especially the more intricate the pan. So the best way to hedge your bets is, especially if you've never made one before, just do a plain bunt pan. This has a couple ridges, but they're not even that deep. That's gonna, be, that's gonna help you. And once you get these going, you can do more intricate patterns. You can do beautiful cathedrals, but let's keep it simple for now. From the red velvet episode, you know that what I like to call goo is equal parts shortening, equal parts butter. Tablespoon of butter, tablespoon of shortening, doesn't matter. I keep it in the fridge until I'm gonna make a cake. Then uh, I happen to have a gas stove, so I just set it on top until it melts, and that's what I use. So we are just gonna take a pastry brush, and we are just going to every single place you can reach on here. And I'm talking from the edge to the edge is going to be covered by this goo. So all I am doing is getting a little bit on here and we're just gonna start painting. This really helps if you're a little meticulous because this is going to take longer than you think it will. But do you see how I started at one spot? I'm not doing this upper rim yet. I'm not doing the middle. I'm just doing one specific area and I'm overlapping every single time I brush, I'm overlapping. So you see how where I ended right there? We're gonna overlap that, and we're gonna overlap it again to get into that crevice. Overlap that again. So that's what you're gonna do all the way around. It's kind of meditative, you know? You're just, nothing else in the world is going on. You're just painting a pan. So you've gone all the way around. Now you see this part right in the middle right here? It's not where the middle part comes out, but it's right before that. That's where we're going next, and we're going up all the way to the top. And remember, we're just gonna overlap and make sure that we've got every little piece we can get. At this point, we're gonna take very, very little, do the upper part, and then we're gonna do this part right here. And the only reason we are doing those parts is because if you are trying to remove a bundt cake, oh, I'm, I'm throwing it at the camera. If you're trying to remove a bundt cake, the two biggest places it sticks other than crevices is this top part and this part because you didn't prep it enough and now the cake is sticking to that and it won't come out. We're gonna take some flour and we're gonna pop it in here. Just, I mean, I'm just throwing it in. We're gonna lay down a parchment. See how that flour is sticking to every place that you put the goo? That is exactly what you're trying to do. And you're trying to get just a little bit more towards the edge every time. If you don't do it the first time, that's okay, watch this. Flip it over. That gets all the excess out. And now you see that this middle area doesn't have flour yet. This doesn't have, and you can literally go back in and make sure that these places that don't have flour that could possibly lead your bunt to stick, you're gonna go back in and get those. All right, so that looks kind of scary, but we're gonna do this. Flip it over, grab it through the middle like this. Oh, there's a little tiny spot right there. Let's get that. This is how you ensure that your bundt cake is going to come out. So as you recall, we have got our butter, sugar, eggs, and vanilla in here. We're just gonna stir that back around. And remember I said it may look curdled. I, it's not gonna affect the final product. At this point, you are going to take your batter as it is now without the flour, and you are going to add the best part of this recipe, and that is citrus zest. So if you haven't worked with zest before, there's two things you need to know. Citrus zest is going to give you more flavor of the fruit than the actual juice will. Also, unless you're buying purely organic and you know where it comes from, always wash your fruit before you zest it because pesticides go on the outside. So you're literally just scraping pesticides in there. So make sure you wash your fruit. We're gonna do two oranges, two... <laughs> two oranges and two lemons. Math ain't math. Oh, I'm just using a microplane. So you see how we have the orange part right here? And this is a little white underneath. We're only going this deep. If you go any deeper than that, you're getting what's called the pith. And that is going to make whatever you're making sour. 
That's what makes citrus sour. So you're only going to do the outside orange bit. So don't microplane for like crazy. You're just, you're literally just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You don't have to be perfect at this. You don't have to be perfect at anything. I am completely absolving you right now of being perfect at anything. Just do what you love and what makes you happy. All right. Got all that zest in there. Took you a little while, payoff's worth it. Back on the mixer, paddle attachment back on. Stir it up, just make sure it gets mixed. We're mixing round. Now that we've got the zest mixed in, we're going to add our dry ingredients. And you're also going to have a cup of buttermilk set aside. When we started this journey five episodes ago, because this is episode six, you will notice that every single recipe has buttermilk in it. And uh, I'm not mad about that. I'm thinking like my next series should just be me looking around California for really great buttermilk. <laughs> like that, like it's my travel show. So we're gonna stir. We're gonna add half of the flour mixture approximately. And you see how that automatically starts coming together like a batter? Trust the process. Got about half the flour in. Oh no, it's starting to look dry. What are we gonna do? Add a cup of buttermilk. And then we add the rest of the flour. The flour is not completely incorporated yet. We've still got a little flour on the sides and on the paddle. We're gonna scrape that off and mix the rest by hand. That just ensures that when we're, huh, what is on me? That just ensures that when we put it in here, we don't have pockets of butter that are gonna bubble up and not make a cohesive cake. I'm gonna scrape around, get all that flour, and then go all the way to the bottom and fold it up. All the way to the bottom and fold it up. And that actually looks pretty good. It looks like we did pretty well today. So good job, guys. Got it all mixed in. We're just gonna pop it in our prepared bunt. This is eyeballing. If it's a little bit lopsided, no one's gonna care. It's good, I promise. And I wish you could smell how much citrus this is. It smells so good. All right. I take a little spatula and just make sure I've got it as even as I can. Rinse off my hands. As you know, I always like to cook everything on a sheet pan with a little parchment sheet in there. You never know what's gonna bubble up. It just kind of ensures it a little bit. This is gonna bake at 325 for, in my oven, it's about 50 minutes. When a toothpick in the middle comes out clean, you've nailed it. And then I'm gonna show you guys the glaze, which is really cool. We're going to do a sugary, buttery glaze on top. And for that, you are going to need the juice of your orange and lemon. I have a tiny juicer, so I have to cut oranges weird. And then I just cut it in half again. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm over here like, I'm gonna use my super cute juicer and I'm just using my hands at this point. That's, wow, okay, good job me. So I'm juicing one orange and one lemon into a container, then, we don't need it for this delicious buttery glaze, but we'll need it for the final glaze. So we are going to do one lemon, one orange in this beautiful red container. Then we are going to do the exact same thing in a separate container. One of the lemons, one of the oranges. But we're gonna learn our lesson and not use this juicer for the oranges because that does not work, obviously. If you have any cuts in your hands, you're going to find them right now. So instead of using a juicer, handy tip, just use a fork. Go in, break the membranes, squeeze it on out. And I will show you the butter glaze once it's almost done, because you want the glaze to be warm and you want the cake to be warm. See you back here in about 40 minutes, roughly. Magic of television. Welcome to shot number two. This is my oven, Iris, Iris, people. Your cake has been in the oven for about mm, 45, 50 minutes. We're gonna start this delicious glaze to go on top of the warm cake. It starts with five tablespoons of butter. I love butter. <laughs> you're gonna do three quarters of a cup of just plain granulated sugar. Pop that right on in. And then you're gonna take the juice of one of your lemons and one of your oranges. So we're not wasting anything. You are going to just pour all of that in there. Crank it up. I have a gas stove, so it's a little bit harder to gauge, but I'm gonna do about a medium heat just until the butter melts. Once the butter melts and everything's ready to come out of the oven, we're just gonna crank it up and let it boil. So we're just gonna sit here for a minute, let this melt, whisk it round. Having a glaze like this on a 
a cake or a bundt cake or a pound cake is actually a very old method of preservation. When uh, refrigerators were very common and people wanted to make a cake, they didn't want it to go bad in you know one day like it's a loaf of bread or anything. They came up with this glaze that's going to coat and become kind of a little bit hard. As you cut the pound cake and eat it over a week or so, it makes sure that everything stays preserved. It just puts a little barrier on it. So that's basically what we're doing. If you've had rum cake, uh, Kentucky butter cake, they do something very similar, but not the same. Try this with a variety of things. You're making strawberry pound cake from the first episode. Add yourself a weird butter glaze on it. It doesn't matter. It's just gonna make it taste better. Once you learn this method, you can use it for anything. All right, so that's just about done. Everything is just melted and combined. Go ahead and crank this up. We're not gonna let it boil over. We literally just want it to boil up and come back down. We're gonna take the cake out of the oven. Woo, it's warm. Let it sit for 10 minutes, but no longer than 10 minutes. This has bubbled up. We're gonna cut the heat, let it boil back down. And that's the glaze. So from here, we're going to turn the bunch cake out. It's still warm. We're gonna add the warm glaze to it, which is gonna make a beautiful sugar coat. And then once it cools, I'm gonna show you a final glaze, which you don't have to do, but it's literally the icing on the cake, literally. So I'm gonna meet you back over here and we're gonna flip out this bunt and cross our fingers it happens. But for real, cross our fingers that it happens. So we've got our bundt cake fresh from the oven. Please be careful, it is hot. We are gonna grab our glaze from the top of the stove. It's all boiled nicely into a kind of caramely sugarization. We're gonna flip out the bundt. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was watching Julia Child. Martha Stewart was making a wedding cake and they had to flip it out. And Julia was a little nervous and Martha was just like, you've just gotta do it. Just with conviction, you've just gotta do it. And that's what you have to do with a bundt cake. We're gonna take a rack, put it directly on top of your bundt cake, grab it as tight as you can, and we're gonna flip it over. Set it back down in a new pan. Move this. You can probably like feel it right now. I'm just like, okay. That's that end zone dancing. We're in cat pajamas. We flipped it over. It's still warm to the touch. We're gonna take our warm syrup, start by just glazing every little bit of it. Get it in all the nooks and crannies. You don't have to be as meticulous with this as you were when we were putting the goop on the pan. This is just to make sure that every bite gets a little bit of that lemon, that orange, and that sweet, sweet sugar. You see how it's also adding a beautiful shiny coat? This is one of those tips that's gonna take your bake from regular home bake to like a professional bake. You're gonna add this glaze. It's going to give a nice, beautiful crunch, which means it's not gonna be all the same texture when you eat it. It's gonna keep it preserved well, and it's just gonna make it look nicer. Your Instagram pictures are gonna be off the chain. Do people still say off the chain? All right, so we're almost finished glazing. Like I said, we just wanna make sure we get every little piece. It's gonna make it look beautiful and shiny and gorgeous. And we're just gonna take the rest of the glaze and do what we all wanted to do anyway. And you're just gonna pour it right on top. Don't be perfect, just pour it on top. Some pieces will get more, some pieces will get less. But look at how gorgeous that looks. You can eat it like this. Add some whipped cream, this is a perfect bundt cake. But what I'm gonna do is do the icing on the cake. And we're gonna let this cool till the cake is completely cooled and the glaze is soaked in. Then I'm gonna show you guys a really great, super easy extra glaze that's going to just take this over the top for you guys. All right, so we have let the glaze set on the bundt cake and look at how beautiful this is. Ooh, ah, it's so stunning and shiny. Shiny bundt cake. Tiny, shiny bundt cake. So I'm going to show you a really quick glaze to put on this. And like I said, this is just amping it up like one more step. So we're gonna start with one to two cups of powdered sugar. Powdered sugar can be a little lumpy. So what I do, I sift it right onto the parchment because I am not here for doing two bowls of dishes. I'm just gonna sift it right here on this parchment. So I'm doing two cups of powdered sugar and that gives you a lot of glaze, but I am just being generous. And we put it right back I need to do dishes. We put it right back in the bowl we measured it into. And see how easy you just make a little sling? Boom. 
Now we have what you reserved earlier, the juice of one lemon and one orange. And we are just going to pour this in until it makes the glaze consistency you want. So I understand that I'm not giving you exact measurements for this glaze. That's because there's not. If your orange and your lemon were very ripe, it's going to give you a lot of juice. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you the consistency that I like and you can go from there. I've got two cups of powdered sugar, juice of one orange and one lemon. Put a little bit in and we're just gonna whisk it. Now I'm already looking at that and knowing that we're gonna need more. See how it's just kind of becoming goopy at the bottom? So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more. One of the things I really like about this glaze is when you see glazes on Bundt cakes, sometimes it's just milk and powdered sugar, but because we're using citrus juice, this is going to reinforce the citrus that we have in the cake, on the cake, and it's not going to taste as sweet. It's not gonna be cloyingly sweet. All of the powdered sugar is mixed in, but that's way too thick for what I want personally. You don't wanna to add too much because the liquid is going to move very quickly. If it gets too watery, just put a little bit more powdered sugar in it. This is not science. This is the part of baking that's just fun. Stay in school. <laughs> All right, so let's check this consistency. That's what I'm looking for. Now we're gonna do my absolute favorite part. You've worked hard and made a very beautiful Bundt cake and that deserves a very beautiful cake stand. This was my mother-in-law's that she left to me and I love it very dearly. So that little humble cake you made, look at that, just on a stand. That already says class. Not that I would know, but that already says class. Now we're gonna take the glaze that we made. I like to just take a spoon to help this along. We're just gonna take a spoonful and just glaze it on around, however you wanna do it. Make it gooey, make it ooey. I always want it dripping down the sides. To me, that is like the epitome of a delicious Bundt cake. Look at that, that's amazing. That's a Bundt cake. That is a Bundt cake. I forgot it was French. So here we are. If you want to, you can put a vase in the middle with flowers, that's fine. But that is my citrus, lemon, orange, Bundt cake. Perfect for all occasions, but especially Easter time. Now we're gonna eat it. We've made the cake. We've made two separate glazes on it. We've been waiting for two hours. It is time to eat it. So I've got my plate, my favorite fork, and we're just gonna cut right in. I use serrated knives, they're a little cleaner. Look at that. You can literally see the zest in there. The best part about this cake, and you'll realize it when you make it, is that it tastes delicious but it's not overly sweet. I know we put a lot of sugar on it, but I promise you it's just gonna be light and airy and citrusy. Told you. <laughs> it's so good. I gotta get a glaze piece. It's lifted up with the lemon. The orange adds such a bright, such a brightness to it. It's so moist, it's so creamy, it's so good. <laughs> if you do one thing, this Easter. Make this for your family and be a superhero. They're gonna love it. In the meantime, I'm gonna need you guys to like, subscribe, and save because this is the last episode of the series and I really wanna do another series. Tell me what you guys wanna see. Tell me what you wanna watch. Tell me if my hair's too big. I don't care if my hair's too big because it's always gonna be this big. This is just my hair. Say it here on the comments. Say it on my Instagram, at Alyssa Marie Baking. Say it on my Facebook, which is also at Alyssa Marie Baking. Send me a message to my website, which is also AlyssaMarieBaking.com. I love you mom. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in these past six episodes. I had a blast making these. Please have a blast watching them. Have a baking party. Have a couple friends over. Spill glaze everywhere. It's a blast. You guys are awesome and I would love to keep talking, but the rules are I have cut a slice of cake, therefore I must eat it. These are rules. Rules are meant to be followed. Happy Easter, guys. See you next time on Alyssa Marie Bakes.